everybody. I, I'm Mairead Ronan. You are very welcome to... I'm a bit nervous about this. It's a live cook-along from my kitchen. I don't know how they managed to rope me into doing this, but they did. Um, I don't know about you, but I spent the last year really, really stuck in a dinner rut, just eating the same dinners over and over again. I just wasn't inspired at all until... Mark from Dingle Cookery School walked into my life. Well, actually, he hasn't walked into my life because I've never met him in real life yet. Uh, we've only talked on the radio show every day, weekdays, Today FM, 12 till 2. But Mark has taught me how to bake, and he's also uh, on the show. He gives us brilliant recipes every Wednesday. Really simple, really tasty, really straightforward, and things that I've never thought of doing at home. So hello, Mark. How are you? Hi, Marais. How are you? I, I'm flying it, but I, you know, normally you just talk me through a recipe on the radio. I go try it here on my own without the pressure of people watching and without the pressure of you watching me, but I'm going to do it tonight. Don't worry. There's going to be no judgment. And it's the same for all the viewers tonight. There's going to be no judgment. It's just cook at your own pace. We'll get there. Don't worry. Don't worry about a thing. Okay, well, you uh, gave us the recipe. Um, we actually asked the listeners, Mark, what recipe they would like you to uh, cook for us tonight. Uh, there was two in the running for a long time, but this one just came in at the end. Uh, most people wanted to know this one. I think because they've been ordering it from their takeaway quite a lot over the last year, it is... It's butter chicken and lovely, lovely rice. So really easy to do. And the good thing about it as well is it's a very simple curry. And if everyone, people love making a curry from scratch. This is a great one to start with because it's nice and mild. We'll talk about it later on if you want to take it up a notch and put a little kick into it. But so easy. It's definitely one of the easiest ones to make. But buttery, just the word buttery, I think. Sells the I mean, yeah, when you see it on a menu, you're straight in. You're like, I'll have that one. That's it. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, anyone who's joining in tonight, uh, any comments, any questions, uh, if you put them below, you will be in with a chance of winning some yummy bottles of stuff from Dingle Distillery. Uh, I've got my drink, Mark. Have you got one yourself? I do, yeah. What did um, you make? Uh, I've got a gin fizz. Since there's no lemon in the, uh, not much lemon in the dish tonight, I said we'd put loads of lemon in the, in the gin. Okay. Now, I'm not drinking much, but there's only a tiny little bit there. The rest is water, just... Me neither. I'm not, I'm not drinking much either. I mean, it's just, I mean, mainly, it's mainly cranberry juice, but like the tiniest drop of vodka in there, dingle vodka, and uh, obviously there's some lime in there and some triple sec. And anyway, it's grand. The focus is really on you tonight and not me, okay? <laughs> so I do have a glass of water here as well. So I, awesome. I do too, because I feel that, you know, the heat of the kitchen, I might need it. And um, will we get cracking then? Yes, let's get going. Okay. So what we're going to do first of all, and for everyone that's out there, if you're trying to follow along, don't worry when we're doing it if you fall behind or whatever, you'll easily catch up. Now, what we're going to do is, I'm going to be cooking uh, mine in a pan. So do, I always go for a pan, especially when I have the camera on, because you'll see it. You can easily cook it in a pot or enamel, sort okay. of dish, whatever. Marie has a pan as well. So I do. Good. And that was an absolute guess, so grand. Okay. So we're going to start on a very low temperature, and I'll talk you to that in a second. So your pan, just turn it on now, nice and low, medium to low. So I always say low, and just when you put your hand over it, it's not hot. We want to start nice and low. So okay. Mark, if we're going like a bit, just stupid question, you know, if I, like on an electric or induction, it's about five, we're level five-ish? Five, yeah, and as we get going, I'll even... We'll be talking about listening to your cooking. It's one thing that we always do here. And you'll see in a few minutes that whatever's in your pan will start to make a noise. We're looking for the quietest noise ever. So you can hear the two of us. Um, and the quieter it is, we'll give you an idea of where it is. Okay. If that was very loud, we just need to turn it down. So mine is, it started off nice and low. But I would imagine on, on your stove, Marina, I'd say, yeah, four or five, something like that. And judge it as we go along. Okay. So... I just throw a little bit of oil in there. If you're going to cook with butter, always put a little bit of oil in there first. That just stops the butter from, um, from just burning in case your pan was too hot. Okay. So butter's gone in there. Now, okay. There's very little to do with this. We're just going to fire in your onions. So regardless if you have them sliced or diced, get them in there. Some lovely ginger and garlic. Very easy so far. Some cumin seeds. Get them in there, and cinnamon. And again, I'll talk you to that in a second. So what you should already have is a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, run a nice low to medium temperature. Yeah. Some onions, garlic, ginger, 
cumin seeds and a cinnamon stick. Okay, right. Nice. I just I've fallen behind already. I am the worst pupil ever. Wait. I'm the one in class put my hand up going, say that again, sir. <laughs> say that again. So hang on, I've got my oil, my butter, my onions, my ginger, cinnamon stick. What is what's missing? Uh, cumin seeds and garlic. Cumin seeds and garlic. Okay, I've got that. And again, if you put in the wrong thing at the wrong time, don't be too worried. You know, it's like you're only cooking dinner. It's not uh, life-threatening. It is the end of the world if every, the whole family's starving. <laughs> and, and everyone's giving out going, what time's dinner? You might have just Sorry, I just did an impersonation of my 14-year-old son there. He'll kill me. He will actually kill me. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen in a minute as it just starts to take a little bit of temperature? We're going to hear the most gentle, gentle noise coming from the pan. Yeah. And that's what we're listening out for. If there's a big loud sizzle, just turn it down. So we're going for an electric car here. Just yeah. silence. You don't hear it creep up on you. Yeah, and what that's doing is it's going to help us bring out all of the lovely juices and flavours from what we've got in there. Now, the good news is, for anyone who wants to learn how to make a curry from scratch, 99% of curries start like that, that you put in your onions, garlic and ginger, and we're yeah. going to cook it really slowly. So that's all you have to do, first of all. We, okay. did, um, we did an online cooking uh, Indian class for a corporate, corporate group last year, and there was one guy in the thing, and he kept asking really good questions. But then at the end, the doorbell rang, and he just got an Indian takeaway. <laughs> hey, but, he, but you see, he'd gained all the knowledge for the next time. He, wasn't, he was yeah. never ordering again. It was like one, one final one. That's what he was saying goodbye. That's what he was doing. That's what he was doing. I've mentioned on the radio show, uh, Mark, that I attended one of your courses before Christmas. And... You are the sole reason that I had a really stress-free Christmas day. I cooked for 10 people. I've cooked Christmas dinner loads of times before, but it's always been a bit, I've been a bit frazzled. And your tips and tricks along on that course that I did a week before Christmas just made it all so easy. And it obviously, because it's what you do for a living. Yeah, and it's what we try to do in the school is that we're never showing off. We want you, we want everybody to cook. If we do something we want to cook, but... Also, we try to take the stress out of it. Like, and the more you start to cook, the more you start to question what's happening in the pan or the pot. What, what's, and then like, that's how you learn. And, like, and even from the Christmas dinner, you would have saw that if you try to get a little bit ahead of yourself yeah. and just work at your own pace. And it's the same for anyone out there tonight. Like, if you're still just only starting or whatever, you'll see now that I've, that's been cooking nice and slowly. I'm just going to bring that up to the camera and the best thing about it is, like, there's no colour on it. It's just really nice and clear. Okay. You're getting loads of flavour in there. And the other tip, you have given this on the radio show before, but, talk, like, look, there'll be people watching now that, you know, don't get to tune in at the time you're on each week. You gave a great tip, and it's made a difference to every time I've cooked chicken. Take your chicken out of the fridge a while before you cook with it. Yeah. And that's the same for any time you cook meat, chicken, fish, anything like that. Because this, the very simple reason for that is if we take it out of the fridge, and it only has to be out about a half an hour beforehand, what you're doing then basically, you're just warming up slightly so that mm -hmm. you're not trying to cook it from the coldness of the fridge. And it just, it really helps. It also helps you to stop overcooking it as well. Yeah. And then the other one is the resting at the end. No, that's, so that's debatable in my family because... <laughs> Some people in my family like eating it so hot, and I mean temperature hot, not spicy hot. They don't believe in resting meat. Some people in my family like it straight from the oven or straight from the pan. I would like to rest it a little bit, but again, they don't. So that one's always a bit debatable in, in our home, but it is, it is definitely the correct way to go go do it. Give it a little rest at the end. I'll have a chat with them if you want. I will. I'll give you their numbers. I'll give you their numbers and you can sort well, them out, Mark. Again, the key thing there for, is like, this is nice and slow. So... There's very little noise from it. And the more you listen to your cooking, I can guarantee if everyone does that tonight, and if you just listen to your cooking, you've already become an incredible cook. Mm -hmm. now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start preparing the rice. I'm going to take the rice. And when you look at the timing of the dish, that this is going to be done in 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that. I always, if I'm serving rice with it, I'll always have the rice ready 15, 20 minutes beforehand. The rice can be just left warm. It doesn't need to be hot. So it's good to just get that going now as well. Okay. Now, so there's a few little simple things about rice. 
First of all, try not to use the boil in the bag rice. This, I just use basmati rice, okay? Once you learn how to cook it, it's just so easy, all right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now is, and I use a little ramekin to sort of guess how much I should be using. It's probably one of the best tips ever. Um, So figure out how much rice you need per person. But I'm still one of these people that when I measure that, I still look and go, oh, that's not That enough. doesn't look like it's enough. They're all going to be starving at the end. Yeah, I'm just saying. I put in more rice and I have enough rice to feed half a dinner. So <laughs> you really only need something like a rabbit, right? Now, I'm going to just turn my back on you for a second. Go guys. for it. So what you need to do is you need to rinse the rice. I'm oh, just good tip. Rice. Right. I'll get mine. I'll do the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just give it a rinse. Yeah, so turn on the cold tap. What? Okay. And just give it a good rinse. A few seconds. And what does what does this do, Mark? What's that, sorry? Why why do you, why do you rinse it? I rinse it to take off the excess starch. So basically at the end of the when the rice is cooked, we don't want it just stuck together. We want to just and by taking off that little bit of starch really helps. Okay. So now I've got my rice in there, the small amount. We need somewhere about one and a half times the amount. We're just going to guess it. I'm going to just put it in first and we'll have a look at it. So whatever amount of rice you've cooked, you need about one and a half. Don't worry if you've got too much in there because we'll easily take out the water or strain it later on. Okay. How a lot of um, the Asian community do it is they actually put their finger in and it comes up to the next digit. So when you put it in, you'll see that it starts to come up to the next uh, digit. But, and don't get too stressed about, it's literally what you're looking at is around one and a half times the amount. So I'm going to just pull this up to the camera for a okay. second. I think I've, okay. Yeah, that looks about the same as mine, Mark. Yeah, we're on the same page. Brilliant. I mean, you're going to be asking me down to Dingle to be one of the teachers very, very I'm soon. I'm always looking for a day off. <laughs> you'll probably, the only problem is you'll probably draw a larger crowd than I ever <laughs> I, I doubt it. Um, so I'm putting this on. This has gone on, gone on the yeah, hob as well. We're going to put it somewhere. I would say, like, don't start going mad with the rice. I would put it that definitely on a medium. So you're looking four or five again. Four or five again. Okay. okay. What I always do is I put the lid on to start because I'm going to bring it up to the boil first of all. So just bring it up. We'll keep an eye on it in a second. And once we get that out of the way, we'll be just concentrate on. How does your kitchen? How does your kitchen smell? Mine smells fab right now. Yes, exactly. And it's going to smell fab tomorrow. Every time you cook a curry, it's going to smell fab. And what I'll actually do is I will send you a list later on in the week that you can put up, and it's pretty much 10 spices that you ever need in your kitchen and you can make thousands of curries from them. So I'll send you that list Brilliant. later on in the week. Yeah. I should tell people you're going to be on with me tomorrow on the radio show with a different recipe that people can try anytime they want over the, the, oh, over the week. Um, so now when you look at that, and it's just what you said a second ago, there should be this beautiful smell from it. So, and there's also no color on it. If you have a color on it, it just means your pan is too high. Again, I would always say it's not wrong, it's just a different flavor. And you yours looked lovely and looked like there wasn't much liquid there now. Mine has still a tiny bit of oil. That's fine, that's all right, because we're going to be turning up the pan in a few moments okay. and we'll get rid of some of that. We have other ingredients to add, so. Okay, that's all right. Now, I've got my diced tomato. Yeah. You can use diced tomato, or if somebody is at home using, um, say, tomato from a tin or anything like that, that's still perfectly fine. Yeah. With the tomato, we just need to soften it. So it's, all, it's ready to eat, the tomato, so we just need to soften it for a minute. Okay. So we're going to be done very short. Yours just, lo- your tomatoes look far redder than mine. Maybe yeah. that's the lovely screen I'm looking at, but yours have a, a really gorgeous colour. Just the sunshine down That's here. This, it's just everything's better in Dingle, I know. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Dingle, a Dingle dub off here. <laughs> and so you're just putting in the tomatoes, just leave them there, just soften. You're talking about seconds, about a minute or something okay. like that. And when you, I would always say to people, when they look at a recipe, try not to get too stressed about the recipe itself. And what I mean by that is, don't sit there and really focus on, oh, it says two minutes, it says three minutes. 
Keep looking into the pan and see what's happening. See if I'm like, oh yeah, it's softening. Then I'll just join the next one and mm-hmm. so on. And that's the best way to learn. And you might say, oh, that's easy for us. We've been doing it all the time. But the more you do that and keep figuring out what's happening in the pan, is it, is it too hot? Turn it down. Mm-hmm. Is it not hot enough? Turn it up. I think because, and I've been one of these, I've been guilty of this, with baking, you have to stick exactly to recipes the majority of the time. You cannot let anything go wrong. You cannot put in yeah. an extra couple of grams here and there. Generally, that will turn it into a disaster. But with cooking, you can play around with it a bit more. Definitely. And I, and I think it's all about understanding what's happening. And also as well, like, if somebody is cooking here tonight and they go, I don't like tomatoes. Don't, <laughs> don't put tomatoes them in. in. <laughs> yeah. We're going to look at the chicken in a second. But if you're a vegetarian tonight and you said, I'd love to do this dish, try it with even something like, uh, there is an Indian cheese called paneer. paneer yeah. But then go with your favourite vegetables. Go with cauliflower. Cauliflower would be gorgeous, yeah. Like it's the flavor that comes from this is going to be beautiful. So take any of these, and like it doesn't have to be the authentic butter chicken recipe. If you want to add something to this, please do. Just add whatever. Now I'm going to just show you the chicken now, and we'll have a look at the chicken. Okay, I'm looking. So we've used natural yogurt for this. <gasps> um, let's just come up to the heat. So now what it's done, I'm just going to go back to the rice for one second. Was I supposed to marinate my chicken in yogurt? Yes. But if you haven't, carry on, it's still going to be fine, right? Because I'm going to show you the rice, first of all. It's just come up to the heat. Now what I'm going to do is... It's like, yeah. Okay. I'm just like back in school. I haven't got my homework done. It wasn't out of any badness. I simply forgot, okay? This right. is, so, so I was supposed to marinate the chicken. I have my chicken and I diced my chicken and I have my yogurt and I have everything else there. What will I do then? You'll be fine because the thing about it is the reason some of it was marinated before is because maybe the chicken wasn't as good. A lot of these recipes were created before for duration. So a lot okay. of foods were sort of heavily marinated and spiced to sort of, they might have been going off a little bit. Okay. You don't have to worry, right? So if anyone has forgot to marinate the chicken, mm-hmm. don't worry. Don't worry. Ideally, you marinate it the day before, if possible. But don't worry, right? So all you do is, if you haven't, have your chicken ready, just cut up or whatever it is. Get your yogurt. Yeah. Put some yogurt in the bowl as well. Yeah. You want your turmeric? It's going to give that lovely yellow. Um, Shall I do thing. it now while you're chatting? I'll put the yogurt. You can, yeah. yeah just, okay. Just let's go do it. So I'm not a day. I'm just doing it two minutes before instead of a day before. That's fine. Yeah. That's it. It'll just put again, and it's. Like, don't ever stress about these things. <laughs> so you've got your yogurt in, you've got your chicken, you want your turmeric, that's going to give it that lovely yellow colour. Now uh, you've got okay. your pinch of, or your garam masala and your cumin. And, ta- um, and tablespoons cumin. of these lads? Yeah, or like, you know, you've got, yeah, so maybe a nice uh, tablespoon in there. Yeah, <laughs> Or a teaspoon. What? I've already made one mistake. I don't need a second one tonight. How much chicken have you got? Uh, whatever you said in the recipe, but three, uh, like six, uh, seven hundred. Yeah, yeah but, so you know, I trimmed, I trimmed a bit of fat off. So you know what was in the packet, but you know, yeah. some of it's gone so out. Then you want a tablespoon, and like spices are quite alien to us in general. So yeah. Don't be afraid to experiment with them. So now, do you all of them in. I put the tu- the turmeric in, but I put in the, all the other ones. The, yes, yeah. you need your garam masala in and your cumin. Okay. So in that chicken dish, there should be chicken, yogurt, garam masala, turmeric, ground cumin, and your lemon juice. Mix that together. I, I'm just going to need a bigger bowl. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to need... Cool. I'm back. I'll be back in two seconds. You're this fine. was not part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sweating on. here now. Okay. Okay, this is a much better bowl that I Thank have you, grabbed. Okay. That's quite a fancy bowl. It's a very, it was a wedding gift. I'm actually married six years on Saturday. Oh, congratulations. I wish I could remember who gave it. Isn't that terrible? I can't. That's what happens just over six years, though. Looking. Just hope they're not looking tonight. I though. hope they're not looking. That would be mortifying. Yes. I'm marinating the chicken in, in I'm the good bowl. I'm marinating the chicken in the good bowl. That's only supposed to be for. Oh, no, now I can't remember. No, I didn't put this in. Or did I? <laughs> <laughs> did I put the cumin in? Does anybody know if I put this in? Put a little bit in anyway. We can always add more at the end if you haven't. I don't um, think I did. I know because I said I needed a bigger bowl. And the lemon juice goes in now as well. Yeah, lemon juice. That's it. 
It sm that smells amazing. As it, that's possibly the best raw chicken smell I've ever had in my life. That smells really, really good. Okay. Nice. So just mix all that through. Yeah. Lemon juice, all that's gone in. Yeah. Perfect. Now, I want you just to have a quick look at your rice now, just to make sure, see, has it come up to the bile or anything like that? No, because I have it on so low. I only have it on a four. Will I bring it up a bit? No worries. You can turn it up slightly. Like there's, wanna... you know, there's steam coming out of it, but it looks a bit, you know, chilled. It looks You're a bit it. horizontal. Now, what I do then, Marit, is keep it as you are. Don't panic with the rice. Okay. And just take the lid. I'm just going to lift mine up. You see that the lid is just slightly ajar. Oh, know? yeah, I get you. Yep. Slanty. And now just leave it take away. We're going to check that maybe in about 10 minutes. Okay. And if it's not done, we'll just leave it on for longer. All right. Great. So we got, yeah. we got over my massive mistake, which is grand. Phew, threw that. Maybe you're inventing a new dish. Maybe you just have to invent a new way of I could have. We don't know. We'll so find out. The lads will find out. The lads on camera and sound will find out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the chicken there. Like, and it has beautiful yellow color. Yeah. And the reason we're marinating it, just it makes it really tender. But it's like what I'm saying, I wouldn't worry too much now about... Some recipes that were marinating them overnight and stuff before. And the reason was, you have to remember, it was before refrigeration. So yeah. maybe there was a slight smell of the chicken or something like that. So okay. No I just, uh, that one goes in, that goes in with all the, everything else that's already. Just yes, so throw it into the pan with the uh, tomatoes and the onions and all of that. Yeah. There. Now, turn the heat up a slight bit, because what we're going to do is, we might get some colour on the chicken, but don't, just turn it up a slight, just okay. a small notch. So I'm yeah. going from, <laughs> I like talking in numbers. Uh, we're going from a five to a seven or a six? Yeah, somewhere around there. And cool. then what you do is, we'll see in a second if it's going too fast, we're gonna turn it down. But we're okay. flying it, you're absolutely flying, flying it. Flying it, well, yeah. Oh, jeez, sorry. <laughs> Now, my uh, Cosmo just popped off there, obviously reminding me to top up. That's what it was doing. God. Yeah, yeah, do it. yeah just whatever you do. I bet you didn't forget to marinate the Cosmo. I did um, not. The Cosmo was made long before we ever went live. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you and everyone the best tip about, do you know the way when you were mixing the chicken there, you're trying to figure out, did I put uh, the cumin in or did I put it Use this tip for baking as well. It'll just change everything. So... What I mean by that is, like, I'm just going to show you with salt and pepper here now, mm -hmm. right? So let's say I was to put this in. Forget that it's salt. I was to put this into the dish. Put it in, but get it out of sight straight away. Put in the next one and get it out of sight. Move it to the other side of the counter. Yeah. So, like, if you're baking and we have five ingredients and the flour has to go into the bowl, get the bowl that the flour was in, get it out of sight. If I was to put the egg in, but get everything as soon as you touch it, and you've used it, get, get it, it out, out there. Okay. You're that's why, you yeah. see, that's why I think I didn't put it in because it was still there and the other ones had moved down the way. So, but we will find yeah, out. Fine. We will find out. Now, all we have to do now is get some liquid in with the chicken. So we're going to put in some chicken stock and don't throw in everything that you have there just in case there's too much liquid or whatever. We can throw in more. I was going to say, because mine, you know, mine looks a bit, liquidy that's fine that's perfectly it's we can i prefer saying that than wet so it does look it's it does look are you i'm worried now i've too much here no. you know the only thing we can never fix in a kitchen is if you over salt something okay if something is too dry we can add more liquid yeah if it's too wet we can reduce it or whatever so like always remember that that you can never go wrong like if I oversaw something, it's the There's no go. It's ruined forever. Yeah. But if I have too much liquid, I can take some out. Okay. Or I can turn up the heat and reduce some. Okay. So let's... Um, so uh, a bit of chicken stock in. Uh, I'm using a baby's bottle, which is perfect because it's got the measurements on it. Very handy. Yeah. I've yeah. loads of them if you need any measuring jugs down in the local <laughs> Cree school. <laughs> We're going to see that on an ad someday. Oh, I know. Now, basically now the chicken is cooking in the liquid. So I'm going to just get Christina to zoom in there so you can see what's happening in mine there. Yeah, it's identical to mine. Like, absolutely identical in colour. 
Um, yep, in liquidiness. Great. <laughs> and what you and get from that is, that is, like earlier on I was saying, listen to your cooking. Yes. Like if we were sitting on the couch now, we could hear that that's bubbling. That's actually going quite fast. So mm-hmm. we're just going to keep it nice and simmering. So if somebody is working with a deeper pot and you're trying to figure out, should I put a lid on it or whatever, put a lid on it if you want. If you take the lid off, we'll just lose some of the liquid. So if you want loads of liquid, put the lid on. If you've no lid, um, you'll lose some of the liquid. So that's why I'm cooking it in the pan. Okay. Now I'm going to have a quick look at my rice as well. Oh, yeah. You know what the rice is done is taste it. So take a clean spoon. Yeah, so... Really? Um, yours is done? Mine is done, yeah. But again, if yours is not, don't worry. Put a spoon in there and basically there should be no... You shouldn't be able to bite the uh, Mine's in. not like that at all. And mine uh, definitely wouldn't feed half a dingle. So that's what I'm going for. Good. I'm going for more in the pot than what I have right now. Yeah, so yeah. for everyone that's watching, just um, taste the rice. If it's crunchy, it's not done. Yeah. If it's... If it's uh, not crunchy and there's a little softness to it, you're good. And all I'm going to do then is put the pot with the lid slightly ajar because it's still cooking in there and yep. it's slightly ajar. That rice is ready, but we're not ready to serve for maybe another 15, 20 minutes, something like that, maximum. Um, okay. Yeah. So what are we going to do for the next three hours? I don't know. I mean, no. it's just three, four hours seemed like a long time. Oh, we've got some, we've got some comments here. Hang on one second. Uh, oh, brilliant. I have some people. I have to say congratulations. Congratulations to Philip Kelly and Anna O'Reilly. They have both won a Dingle Distillery party pack, which is full of everything you need to kickstart off your cocktail night and then go cooking or maybe cook and then have the cocktails. That's probably a better idea than what I did. Uh, I'm having the uh, Dingle Vodka. It is absolutely delicious. I've had the Dingle Gin before. That's behind me there. Yeah. Never had the whiskey. Well, sure, I might give that a go. You're on the, you're on the gin. I'm on the vodka. Oh, my, mine is bubbling up here now. Should I turn her down? Yeah, turn it down slightly. You want to just keep it as simmer. Simmer. And okay. if anyone is trying to figure out what a simmer is, yeah. simmer should be like a gentle heartbeat. That's oh, okay. I need to take it down a little bit more because mine's like me after a 3K run here. <laughs> it's, a, it's pumping here. So I'll take her down. Just a nice simmer. Like, as, again, what we're cooking, like, and the funny thing about it is if we call this a stew, people probably wouldn't like it. Like, I know. It's, it, listen, that's what some dishes just get bad PR. <laughs> like, a curry is pretty much just a stew. A stew yeah. just means it's been cooked in liquid. Um, but the faster we cook it, we can sometimes make it tougher. We just want to let it simmer nice and slowly, like that gentle heartbeat. I've definitely been guilty, very guilty. And Louis, my husband, who's just in the other room with the kids there, would run in if he was that kind of a person and say, I'm definitely guilty of having tough chicken before. But I do think that's because I took it straight from the fridge and, and cooked it. And it's, there is nothing worse than tough meat. It is the worst thing. It almost makes me want to become vegetarian. Yeah, and it's but a few little things like that will always help, you know. And if you're cooking, um, like the, I'm using the leg of the chicken, it's probably slightly tougher, so we need to cook it longer. If there's someone out there tonight using chicken breast, mm-hmm. perfect as well, it's probably going to just cook a little quicker, you know. Mm-hmm. So you need to just know what you're cooking, and just a very simple way if you're trying to figure out if you're at the butcher and you're trying to figure out is that tough or is it not tough, try to figure out where it's come from on the animal. If it's a leg or something like that and it's done loads of work, it's going to be tougher. If it hasn't done work, like say the breast of chicken has done very little work, that's going to be very lean. Okay. So. Yeah, that's, that's a good tip. Or the yeah. other crazy thing is ask the butcher. I mean, yes. we, why are we afraid of asking questions as an adult? You might go, I feel a bit thick asking this, but what's the no, story? And there's, like, same here when we have people, whether they're in front of us or ask the questions like hopefully we'll answer and if we can't we go find out and, and come back with an answer yeah but now if you look at that now and i think yours looks the same or it, it's just nice and bubbling away can i just ask i didn't put in tomato puree was that supposed to go in 
Not yet. Okay, worry, Grant. If it is, to, if you've thrown it in, again. No, no, I, I didn't. I didn't. So the cream hasn't gone in and the tomato puree hasn't gone in. I'm just looking at it there going, was she supposed to go in a while ago and she's been left there? No. So tomato puree, cream and coriander is the only thing that's going to go in there. The in very the end. Okay, my rice is looking a little bit better. So um, the liquid yeah. has been kind of, it's still, still a bit... Um, Stodgy looking, like a bit kind of yeah. kind of wet and sticky. So will I will I we'll get a little piece and try it? But okay. It won't keep stirring the life out of it as oh. well. Oh really? It. That's not what you're supposed to do. Okay. No, we'll just leave it like that. Um, I want to say Yasmin. Yasmin Kenny also forgot to uh, marinate her chicken like a certain somebody. Don't know who That's they're talking right. about. Who are you talking about? Well. She's a great cook. And hello to Brad. He's watching along in Canada. How are you? How's it going, Brad? Okay. Um, <laughs> That's. That's a bit, and, uh, that's a bit, um, still a bit chewy for me. Okay, we'll just leave it on then again. And so don't just stir the life out of it. Oh, don't stir the life out of it. So I'm afraid now it's going to stick to the bottom though, Mark. Ah, uh, chewy, the chewy kind. Do you know? Famous last <laughs> words. So I'll be feeding the lads a uh, butter chicken with uh, a fork and no rice. That's what I'll be doing. Okay. But you know, there is, uh, there's a dish that I really want to do every now and then. It's, um... It's, it's a Persian dish from, uh, from Iran, and it's tag dig or something like that, where they burn the top of the rice, like, because they turn it over, and they all, like, really, whoever gets the burnt one, they love it, like, so. Because it's a, it's a, it's a joke on that person, food. or it's a... No, it's a delicacy in Iran. It's called tag dig or... Give tag me that, dig. and I can serve it up to the family and go, no, it's a delicacy. I burnt the rice on purpose. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So should I take this off the heat mark and just leave it on its own? Just the no, look at just another small bit if it's still that little bit. Uh, I'm just, I don't, like, you know, I'm, I'm you gonna call, I'm it? gonna just come clean to you, okay? I use the boil in the bag stuff, so. <sighs> Like okay. there's no way around it. I think it's I think it's pretty obvious, and I have to admit that because <laughs> I would have thought you stirred the shite out of this, because, but you don't. Yeah, so you don't. You if leave it. You have used that one. Mm -hmm. What I would do now is um, take it off the heat, put the lid on it, and leave it for the moment. Right? Okay. Don't throw it out. Don't put it in the bin. Um, that's fine. So, and what will happen is when you do that, it will just finish off the cooking. A boil in the bag rice doesn't need much cooking, so leave it off the side for a moment. Oh no, this is the real, this is the rice rice. This is, I'm just saying, before tonight, I'm guilty oh, of using right. boil in the bag rice. This is basmati, I've, I've done it. No, this, that's why I'm a bit clueless, because I'm going, this doesn't look oh, right. That's all right. I thought you were just after confessing that you're No, not no, no. Tonight is all the real deal. No, just previous to, you know, other nights I have used boil in the bag. But you're probably only maybe two or three minutes away from the rice being done. I think she's yeah. ready now. She's... Yeah, don't stir it, just taste it. Yeah, okay. because what happens every time you stir it, like you're, you yes. end up just what? Done? Done. Okay, all and you do now, Marie, is take the lid off and just leave it slightly just to one side like that. Oh, take and, and take it off the heat. Take it off the heat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Your rice is now done. Uncle Ben will be so proud of you, Marie. Well, wow, so yes. I, Uncle yeah. Ben is very proud of me using his boiling the bag all the other times. All we're doing now is, and it doesn't matter which order we put them in, get your tomato puree in there. Lovely. And Actually, I better not use that because I just used that one. That was another tip you had at Christmas. It was brilliant. It, it was have loads of spoons for tasting, but then yes. obviously chuck them because I used that one. So, and I am feeding other people, so I need oh, to just chuck them. I'm going to show you an easy way to do that as well. Like what we would always do in every professional kitchen would have something like a Very good. spoons in there and hot water. So when you do taste, it goes back into hot ah, water. Ah, boiling water. Very good. Take it every now and then, and it's but it just like before everyone starts cooking, you if you set out your station with just spoons, salt and pepper, a cloth to clean down, and a bin somewhere, <laughs> you're fairly you're sorted already. You're now, set. Uh, quickly, Tracy wants to know: Can you substitute ingredients within reason? Um, like she doesn't uh, have a cinnamon stick, so could yeah. she have used ground cinnamon instead? Yeah, and if you are Tracy, like the, the stick. Is going to come out at the end. I'm trying to go very lightly. Give it the tiniest pinch. You just want to give it that little bit of cinnamon flavour, but you don't overpower it. 
And yes, if you don't have something, try something else. Try put it in there a little as I suppose. Um, yeah, so cinnamon stick ideal, but if you don't have on the tiniest pinch, we don't want the taste of cinnamon. It should just give mm. us this very subtle flavor in there. Okay. Um, now, I've chewed the cream in there and the tomato puree. Have you done that as well, Mairead? I put that in. Tom- and somebody else has asked, is tomato paste the same as puree? It's... It's not, and it's, it's quite a funny question because some shops call it the same, some don't. So if you have tomato paste and it looks like a, the puree itself, that's what mine look like. Yeah. Yes, go for it and just a small one. Okay. Technically it's not, but I think most shops, they, there's some of them call it, some of them don't. Don't get too stressed about it. We're looking at a similar product. Okay. It is slightly bitter, both of them. So okay. we're going to just give this little bit of bitterness. That's why you always crook it that little bit. Now the curry is just looking really, oh, it's, it's looking amazing there. Even anyone out there who didn't marinate this, you put it, see that it's tasty. It's going to be so lovely. It does smell good, but next time I will marinate the day before. We've- and the colour of it is beautiful as well. Meanwhile, you can, now is the time you should be just sipping away in the cocktails. Someone else is going to wash up. Don't ever worry about that. Oh, always. That is the rule. There's a couple of rules in my house. One is you can't take it with you when you go, and that is the remote control when you leave the room. You can't do it. And the other rule is if someone cooks, the other person cleans. Yeah. Straight out. And That's it. For anyone out there who's still trying to figure out should they learn how to cook, learn how to cook. You never have to do any more wash up. Um, what's, what's your next course that you've got going over the next few weeks? Um, so we're starting to, now in the next few weeks, we, we're, we're starting to get a better idea of what's happening here now as yeah. regards to events, what we're allowed to do and stuff. So uh, sort of mid-July, we're going to be back doing our catch and cooks. And that's the one where we take you out, you send you out to Dingle Harbour to catch some fish. Oh, lovely. You bring back the fish, we show you how to finish it, you finish it, you cook it, you sit down and have a wonderful meal. So we have plenty of those running through the summer. Uh, we have a few nice corporate ones, and that's for work for anyone out there that has a has a you know a business or a down the one to take their staff out for something evening, yeah. night class or whatever. They're always good fun. They're great fun. And then we're putting together. We should have a finalised program in the next sort of week or so because we now have a better idea of what's happening. Of but what's happened. But I do room. think, if anything, the last year, Mark, people have definitely gotten into food and baking for sure over the last year. Yeah, and you know, I, I know we often have discussed this uh, on your show on the radio and stuff. Is like, like one of the reasons I learned how to cook in the, in the beginning of what I started was pick the four or five things that you love cooking. If you mm-hmm. don't like, if you love making a lasagna, learn how to make a lasagna from scratch. Yes, want, whatever yeah. it is, just and I can guarantee you, once you learn those four or five things, you'll see. Well, maybe today I'm going to throw carrots in there. Maybe yeah. today I'm going to throw put some of this. That's what cooking is. And the easiest tip for everyone to remember out there as well is the more you learn the techniques of cooking, there's probably only 15, 20 of those. If you know how to boil something, simmer, roast, it doesn't matter what the recipe is then. Because you can, like if we were doing roast lamb today, would you go to the butcher and you have no lamb? You can, you can just do more. something else, yeah. Exactly. And never panic. Do you know, don't ever panic. Yeah, that's the thing. Don't ever panic. I have to say to everyone who is cooking along at home, don't forget to post a pic of your your finished dish for us um, and tag Today FM, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, use the hashtag Cook Today FM to be in with a chance of winning a cash prize of two hundred and fifty euro. Does that same rule apply to me? No. If I if I put my dish up and <laughs> tag Today FM and hashtag Cook Today FM, I mean mine's looking very very tasty. It's still a bit liquidy. I'm still, it's still a little bit, but I do like um, lots That's of sauce so on my rice. So should I, should no, I just I'm look just at the rice? Show you mine there again. <gasps> it's a bit, no, it's all right. I'm just going to show you mine there again, Mairead, and you'll see that there's quite a lot of liquid in Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, we're the, we're the same. That's all good. That's all now, good. If there's too much for you there, right? Yeah. Put it back on the heat, give it welly there for a few minutes. Okay. Turn it up. Yours is in a big wide pan, so is mine without a lid. Even within two minutes, we're going to lose some of that liquid. Okay. okay. So don't worry if there's too much there. So like what I was saying earlier on, one of the only things we can't fix is if you oversalt something. If yeah. I, I put in way too much salt. So 
If this was too dry now, we could just add a little bit of any type of liquid, even if we only had water left. No you could throw left. that in. So yeah. you think we're, are we kind of nearly, nearly ready to dish her up or what? We're nearly there. Well, nearly let's there. have a look at the rice. Oh now, yeah. Now is the only time you should be really going to stir the rice, okay? So use a fork to stir the rice. Mm-hmm. So, and a good sign of if your rice, a good basmati, when I love cooking it, it almost stands up in the pot. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's good to know for the next now, time I cook it. Is gently run the fork through it. Okay. Job done. Job done. Okay, yes, I think and so. Rice for, unless rice is the main dish, like we have lovely, there's often recipes for spice rice and stuff, and that becomes the main dish. For the most part, rice is not seasoned. We don't need to put salt and pepper in there. Yeah. And it can give so much flavor in the other dish. And we should be good. Now, before I serve it up, I just want to check it. And especially if there's any of your listeners out there, there's a question in. Um, uh, So if someone wants to check it, basically, this is the most important part. So if you're feeding your family, friends or whatever, that even if you're after falling behind or you're a few minutes ahead of us or whatever, check the chicken itself just to make sure it's done. Now, all I'm doing is, if you're not sure, just open up one. I'm just using a small knife. Okay. Have a look at the center. If it's not pink in there, I'm just going to, one second, I'll just get a fork there. Ah, yeah. I'm still here, I'm still here. Um, Right. All good. When we take that, and it's hard to see because there's curry and stuff like that in there, if I see that the chicken is cooked, right, and if you're just not sure and you think that, oh, it's still a little bit pink, leave it on for another few minutes. Like, it's always that way. Would you rather be uh, <laughs> serve up a meal that's late or do you want to give them food poison? So, like, mm. just leave it there another couple of minutes, check it again, and you're going to be good to go. Okay. With that. How is yours? You Mine, happy? mine's good. I cut into two or three pieces there, and they are all white all the way through. So Brilliant. everyone in my company is safe for tonight. Now, what? <laughs> <laughs> if no one turns into radio tomorrow, <laughs> unless there was just loads of cocktails in the house. Um, yeah. Now, also, as well, don't take anything for granted. Right? Yes. Yeah. We need to fix this. So because again, we can fix everything. So clean spoon. Clean yeah. And just the curry. Oh, I've gone for a big spoon. Teaspoon, sorry. Greedy. No, it doesn't matter. You can go for a wooden spoon if you want. Or if okay. You... I've just added a tiny bit of salt and pepper. But remember, you're the cook. You're in control. So just... Mm. And how does that taste, Marie? Is that good? I mean, it tastes lovely. Or mm. I might be sharing it at all. Yeah, After all, definitely. they're giggling and sniggering and laughing. They mightn't be getting any of it. You're going to get the last one. Yes, I will. <laughs> that is so important, that point of tasting, because now you can fix it. So, like, if your dish didn't have loads of flavor, we can add a tiny bit of spice. And that's the same for every dish in the world. The one thing I was saying earlier on is if someone is cooking that, and because butter chicken is a mild, very mild curry, if somebody is cooking that the next time and would love a kick in there, yeah. add a tiny little bit of chili powder in with it, okay? And even though I'm always saying to people, experiment with spices, with chili, go easy. Easy, so, yeah. And then you can always taste it and see how it is. And then if you've made it, we've made that just too hot and you're going to serve it out on the table and you know that maybe you like it, but maybe the kids don't like it. Or yeah, you can it. leave it, leave it out. Another good thing to do is if it's if it's already too hot, serve up some yogurt with it. Just put a bowl of yogurt on the table and let's say it's for the kids and you think it's too hot, put some yogurt, a dollop of natural yogurt over it just before you serve it. You've fixed it. So everything is fixable. Everything right? is fixable. Like I proved so, earlier on with the no marinade. Okay, what do I is this a plate or a bowl job? What would you go for? I would you know, I would probably go for a bowl because there's liquid there. Okay, so I haven't got a deep bowl. I've just got a nice, shallow enough bowl. Yeah. Um, a plate will probably just... Run everywhere. I'm just going to get a small bowl here. I don't bowl think I have a big one. Okay, I'm going to go with... I'll leave the frog I'll leave the frog plate where it is. Okay, so I've just got a small enough bowl here because I'm not sharing. Um, okay, yeah. 
Now, another tip for if you still think it's too liquidy, like there's loads of liquid in mine as well, but I don't want to give you all the liquid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a slotted spoon. I'm just going to take out some of the meat and or sorry. Oh yeah, chicken. yeah. I can do that. And just get a nice bit of that in, but. Try and give everybody an equal amount. What I mean by that is like that. If I'm sitting down at your table, I don't want to be eating all the tomatoes and looking across. And the looking meat. across, and Pete's got all the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then don't serve the cinnamon stick. Do you know? Oh yeah. It look really cool. Some of that'll be down the back eating that that has never uh, had it before. Um, so is then, it, your rice has gone in there. Did I miss that? Getting my spoons. No, not yet. So oh. I just uh, curry in there. Right. And we can, you judge how much liquid you want in yeah. there. That's, you know, remember, you're the cook. They've come to your house. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're the boss. Let's get so, that on an apron. You hear that, guys? Boss. No. I've got my rice, okay? Now you see that I've only cooked rice for two people, and you see that... There's yes, plenty there's there. plenty there. Yeah. And as well as that, the rice, we turned it off... 10, 15, 20 minutes ago, whatever. So it's just warm. And now we just get a rice in. You don't oh, need so you just put rice. it on the side. Okay, I can do that. I can just put it... Of course you can. I'll go for whatever way you want. Yeah. So you get the middle star, uh, Marie. All righty. Okay. That's probably... Now, just one safety tip with rice. People would look at this dish and they would say, right, if I was to eat that tomorrow... Which is the most, which is the problem with food poison? Sometimes people think of the chicken. Yeah. This is quite dangerous if we don't cool it down properly. Yes. Okay? So let's say I'm going to eat that rice. That's my leftover rice. I can safely eat it tomorrow. But what I would do is put it onto a plate or a tray and let it cool down within the next sort of half an hour. Get it into a container and then in the fridge. Don't leave this out for the next few hours. You leave it at 12 o'clock that it's, because that's still cooking away and stuff. So, just be careful of rice. It's if you follow the rules, that simple rule by cooling it down, you're good to go. You're good to go. Okay. All we do now, Maraid, is take your coriander if you have coriander, chopped coriander. Yes. That looks. Look at that. That looks amazing. It does, doesn't it? Not go be long before you have your own cooking show. Right? <laughs> I couldn't handle the stress of it. I've an awful Ireland's fittest family and the radio show every day. Thank you very much. Cookery show just, would just be too stressful. A little bit of coriander over it. Okay. What well, would be lovely if people want to add to that as well? Some almonds, toasted off in a pan, flaked almonds would be yep. lovely. Crispy onions would be nice. That looks great. Should I tuck in now? Is that what we're allowed to do? Like the end of the cookery show where someone just tucks in and says, mmm, delicious. Yeah. We've Definitely. seen them all, yeah. yeah. Uh, before, yes, that is, I'm going to give it a go before I give any, anything to and the lads. And regardless, Marie, it's delicious. Oh, oh that's it. Food. No matter what it tastes like, I go, mmm, yes. yummy, like Nigella. <laughs> oh, that is lovely. Is it really good? That is really, really good. That is really, really good. I hope everybody out there, I hope they're going to have something similar. Like, and if, mm. if you've loads of liquid left over after serving everybody... Keep the liquid back and throw it into a container. Make soup or something tomorrow and throw it in there. That like you'll now have a curried soup. Like so, don't throw it out. Like, whatever's left will be will be tomorrow's dinner. Definitely. Uh, that is brilliant, Mark from Dingle Cookery School. Thank you so much. Thanks, to, thanks for being with me for the last year. I cannot wait to meet you in real life. I know, and it's probably going to happen in the next few months. Um, thanks to everyone who, t- who joined our cook along. Um, and if your kitchen smells half as good as mine, then you're very, very lucky. But don't forget to tag Today FM if you make this dish. Hashtag Today FM. What is the hashtag again? Today FM. Cook Today FM. Hashtag cook today FM because you could be in with a chance of winning a cash prize of 250 euro. Apparently the rules state that neither myself nor Mark can win the prize, which I'm a bit cross at. But anyway, I let that one go. You have to lose a few battles, Mark, to win the war, as I've been told. So um, so that's it. Um, Mark, I'll be be talking. Yeah, I'll be chatting to you tomorrow on the radio. Um, I'm on from 12 o'clock, 12 till 2 on Today FM. I'll be chatting to Mark again live with a brilliant recipe tomorrow at around 20 past 12, Mark. That's, we'll, be, we'll chat around that time so people can tune in, get another oh, recipe. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they're very easy, they're very straightforward and they're very, very tasty. So thanks a million. I'll chat to you tomorrow at 12. Mark, talk to you at 20 past 12 tomorrow. Thanks, thanks all your team. Bye. Thank Cheers.